Spider-Man, as we all know, has the powers of a spider, meaning he can stick to walls, is super strong, athletic, and has a host of other powers. But on occasion, he has also gained other superpowers over the years. Now, he usually loses them and reverts back to his normal spider-based powers in the end. But this video is going to go over all of these other times that he has gained other powers. Gone the powers of a god. Now, considering Spider-Man is often the underdog in a fight, it's surprising just how many times he's gotten the powers of a god. In Spectacular Spider-Man 158, Spider-Man merges with the cosmic force of the Unipower and becomes Captain Universe. Now, the Unipower chooses heroes to give power in certain moments of crisis so that they are able to help others. And then the power leaves their body and moves on to someone else. So Spider-Man is far from the only being to ever get this power. But when he has it, Spider-Man basically becomes a god, and is so powerful that he can defeat Magneto, Doctor Doom, and the Hulk without even breaking a sweat. And now that he has become Captain Universe, which is what people are called when they're possessed with the Uni Power, he can do quite a lot of things, including flight, energy projection, make people tell the truth, is insanely strong, and has the power to manipulate matter, meaning he can basically do anything that you can imagine. And in Marvel Zombies, he acquired not only the powers of a zombie, such as not feeling pain and not aging and essentially being undead forever, but he also gets cosmic powers. When the Silver Surfer comes to Earth, the zombies attack and eat him, and in doing so, they gain some of his power cosmic. They then use this power, combined with some super science, to kill Galactus, and then they eat him and gain all of his powers. And it's never shown what the full extent of this power actually is, but basically, Spider-Man has the power of flight, including flight through space at superhuman speeds. He also has energy projection and the power to devour whole worlds, just as Galactus formerly did. And the zombies fly through space, eating the entire universe, defeating every army that every alien empire has and other beings with godlike power as well. So they become a pretty unstoppable force. Magical powers. Spider-Man has got magical powers on several occasions usually involving or from the Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange. In the One More Day story event, when Aunt May had been shot and Spider-Man was looking for a way to heal her, Doctor Strange said that there was nothing that he could do, but that Peter had to see that for himself. And so he cast a Hand of the Dead spell that allowed Peter to travel around the world almost instantly, so he could search everywhere on the globe for help though no one can help her, and so in the end he actually ends up casting a spell on himself in order to go back in time and stop her from being shot in the first place. And this doesn't work out very well, and he is nearly killed by magical creatures in the process, but of course he is saved by Doctor Strange. And on a different occasion, Doctor Strange has actually cast a spell to allow him to open portals to travel to and from the Astral Plane in order to track down a supervillain called the Shade who was abducting runaways, drug addicts and the homeless, basically people that no one would miss, and then storing them in the astral plane to use as a source of magical power. And in the Spider-Man the Animated Series, Peter is investigating a cult that Mary Jane has joined, as she thinks they have the power to reunite her with her father. But in truth, the Sorcerer Mordo is just using them. He's casting a spell that makes them go into a fantasy dreamlike state where they think they're meeting their loved ones, while in the real world he takes over their minds and bodies and gives them the powers of flight, energy projection and super strength. Also he has an army of super powerful people so that he can steal from Doctor Strange. Now when Spider-Man is trying to rescue Mary Jane, he also gets caught in this spell, so he is given extra strength, energy projection and the power to fly. Though we actually only see him use the power of flight, and he has no control of these powers at all, as he is completely under Mordo's control, until Doctor Strange breaks the spell and releases him. But he does still, technically speaking, get magical powers, even if he isn't consciously able to control them. And in the Ultimate Spider-Man animated series, Doctor Strange gives him his cloak and the Eye of Agamotto, which gives him the power to fly, open portals and travel through dimensions, and he has grape-coloured webs which are imbued with magic, meaning that they work on supernatural creatures, and supernatural creatures seem unable to break them. And Spider-Man actually has a lot more powers available to him, but unfortunately he lacks the magical knowledge to access the full power of the cloak and the Eye of Agamotto. 
And in the Ultimate Spider-Man TV show, he also uses the Eye of Agamotto to cast a spell to defeat Mordo in another episode. Though whether this counts as him having magic powers is up to you, because he just casts a spell once, so he's not really getting many powers. Spider-Man has also gained magical powers through Asgardian weapons. During the Fear Itself comic event, Tony Stark used Asgardian magic and Asgard's weapon forge to make weapons for all the main Avengers. One of which was of course Spider-Man, and he got two gauntlets that basically just enhanced all his existing powers, and gave him the power to defeat gods. And since the suit is made from Uru, the same stuff that Thor's hammer is made from, it's pretty badass. And also gave him one of the best Spider-Man outfits ever, and it's actually my favourite spider suit from the PS4 video game. And in the Marvel Adventures comic book, he is also given a magic hammer. Now, it looks like Thor's hammer, but technically it isn't Thor's hammer, it just looks a lot like it. It's actually part of a spell that the Enchantress has placed on Peter Parker, putting Spider-Man under her power. And she then puts the Norn stones on him like a necklace. And the Norn stones then imbue him with Asgardian magic that has enhanced his normal powers and seems to have made him almost as strong as Thor, and giving him powers that are pretty much the same as Thor, super strong, flight, blasting lightning and Spider-Man is able to beat an entire Asgardian army all on his own. However, when Thor shows up, it's a different story, as he crushes Spider-Man's hammer easily and then beats him even more easily, blasting him with his lightning and changing him back to normal. And sadly, Peter Parker has actually yet to pick up Thor's hammer properly in the main continuity and get his Thor powers. Though hopefully one day they will do that storyline, because a story where Spider-Man gets Thor's powers would be awesome. And during the comic Avengers and the Infinity Gauntlet, Spider-Man manages to web the gauntlet off of Thanos, and then he uses it to undo everything that Thanos has done. Though sadly, no one other than Spider-Man remembers any of it happening, except for Thanos, who clearly wants revenge. Transformations In Spider-Man the Animated Series, it's revealed that Spider-Man gaining his spider powers was just the start and that that spider bite actually started a mutation that's going to mutate him further. And at first this means that he grows four extra arms, giving him eight limbs in total, just like a spider. And of course giving him some extra strength, as extra arms would obviously make you stronger. And he later mutates further into a man spider, which I actually liked as a kid, but as an adult I think it actually looks pretty terrifying. I mean just imagine that in live action, it'd be the stuff of nightmares. But when he's mutated, his spider powers are of course all super enhanced, making him even stronger, faster, and having organic webs. Though sadly his mind degrades, and he basically becomes a mindless beast. Though luckily he has some super scientist friends who are able to cure him of this condition. He is also transformed into a giant spider in the comics on a few occasions, such as when a woman named the Spider Queen causes him to mutate into one. And again his powers are greater, but he loses his mind and looks like a monster, and is basically the Spider Queen's slave. Though of course he does get turned back to normal later on. But when he transforms back into a human, he has a few new powers. Namely, he has organic webs, which was made to tie in with the Tobey Maguire films, though fans did dislike this and so he lost them soon after. And he also had stingers for a while, which basically would bust out of his arms like Wolverine's claws, and they had a poison on him that he could stab people with. And this poison could be weak and just incapacitate someone, or it could be strong enough to kill someone, as Spider-Man used it to kill Morlun, a supposedly immortal supernatural creature. So the venom is pretty strong. And in a what-if story called Arachnophosis, which I think I'm pronouncing correctly, but forgive me if I'm not, Spider-Man transforms into a monstrous spider creature once more. Though in this, it seems that it wasn't because he was bitten by a radioactive spider, but because he was actually a mutant, just like the X-Men and it's a condition which his son has sadly inherited. And later on in the story, he unfortunately is beaten to death by a mob who basically hate mutants and hate spider mutants even more. And in Ultimate Spider-Man, Spider-Man is hit by a dart and he is infected with a savage land poison and transforms him into a man spider. And he turns into pretty much the same creature. His brain is degraded, but he is now stronger. In fact, he's strong enough to beat up a T-Rex on his own. And in the show Spider-Man Unlimited, where Spider-Man is on an alternate Earth filled with human-animal hybrids, the High Evolutionary tries to change him into a giant spider. 
and he does partly succeed as he does turn into a giant spider, though Spider-Man is able to stop and reverse the transformation pretty quickly. He has also been shrunk down by pin particles on a few occasions, though this doesn't really give him any new superpowers, other than being small enough to get into places he normally couldn't, such as inside Nick Fury's body to destroy nanobots that are in his bloodstream. And of course, whenever Spider-Man is merged with a symbiote, he is transformed as well. Sometimes this is a very subtle transformation, sometimes it's quite a drastic one. And Spider-Man has been with a lot of different symbiotes over the years, but basically he becomes stronger, faster, and the suit also makes special, stronger webbing for him. And in some versions, he can morph the suit into any clothing he likes, which for a superhero is really useful when you need to put on your superhero outfit. Though since the symbiotes increase aggression and violent behaviour like nuts, he never really stays bonded to them for very long. And during the Holt Out Heroes comic story, a number of superheroes were exposed to the same mutating gamma radiation that Bruce Banner was when he was transformed into the Hulk. And so the heroes transformed themselves into their own versions of the Hulk. And there were actually some pretty good Hulk designs, though the best ones were really Wolverine and Thor. But Spider-Man was also transformed into a Spider-Hulk. Though sadly his design is pretty much the same as normal. He's still in his spider suit, he's just become bigger and stronger and the suit is stretched out because of this. Whereas personally, I would have liked him to rip out of the suit a bit more, but that's just my opinion. Now Spider-Man doesn't go as nuts as the Hulk does. His IQ is lowered and presumably has a Hulk healing factor, endurance and of course the insane strength that the Hulk has. And when you combine this with a spider's proportional strength, this probably makes him stronger than the Hulk is. Now the heroes later had the radiation sucked out of them by Bruce Banner, which is good because one of the villains does say that the radiation wasn't safe, and that otherwise they'd be dead within 24 hours. And in a what if story where the Punisher wipes out most of the Marvel Universe, and quite a lot of the people on Earth, the world is exposed to a virus that makes them bigger and stronger, but it also makes people primitive in mind. It's kind of like a devolution virus, making us all into our more less evolved selves, and the world descends into a primitive jungle-like chaos. And in this universe, Spider-Man is, again, basically just bigger, stronger, and faster. And still, just a big muscly guy in his usual spider suit. Though he is a bit dumber and more primitive, even at one point attempting to eat the rhino after defeating him. Body swaps. Now, Spider-Man has switched bodies on a surprisingly large number of times. He has switched minds with Wolverine, both in the Ultimate Comic and in the Ultimate Spider-Man animated TV show. Wolverine goes in his body and Peter Parker is in Wolverine's body and has all of his powers, meaning he has his enhanced senses, his healing factor and of course his adamantium claws. He's also switched bodies with Loki, God of Mischief. And while in Loki's body he has had his near invulnerable flesh, which came in very useful as all the other heroes thought that he really was the God of Mischief and attacked him. He also had access to Loki's magical powers. Now, the full extent of this is not shown, as Loki does have a lot of magic abilities, and Spider-Man could possibly use all of it. But all he really uses in the show is energy blasts from Loki's staff. He has also switched bodies with the Hulk. And since he is in the Hulk's body, he of course gets his powers, meaning near unlimited strength, near invulnerability, and a healing factor. And he gets to keep all of his intelligence which actually makes him insanely powerful when you think about it. Now, in all of these cases, he obviously has his mind switched back. With Loki, it was Loki who switched their minds in the first place, so that he could wreak havoc in Spider-Man's body when Spider-Man joined the Avengers team. And as for the Hulk and Wolverine, it was just Mesmero messing with Spider-Man, because Spider-Man defeated Mesmero and locked him away, and basically, he wasn't very happy about this. And during the Superior Spider-Man event, Peter Parker and Otto Octavius switch bodies, as Otto was dying and basically wanted Spider-Man's youth, health and power. So in a way this means that he had Otto Octavius's powers. But since Doc Ock's powers are all tech-based, this isn't technically speaking powers, though he can talk to his Otto bot machines and control them, and of course has his metal arms. Though again, whether you count that as a superpower, it's really up to you. Especially since Otto's body is dying, so Parker really didn't get to use any of them fully anyway. Video games. Sony owned the rights to Spider-Man as well as the PlayStation consoles, and as such, there has been a lot of Spider-Man games, ranging from the hilariously dreadful Please, someone? I'm going to, die. 
to the unbelievably awesome. And in some of these, he gets a few new powers. In the game Shattered Dimensions, Madam Web enhances his spider sense to make it super sensitive and powerful. Now, instead of just detecting danger, you have the added abilities of seeing through objects, locating enemies, and discerning structural weaknesses in your environment. Cool! And in the Edge of Time video game, Spider-Man also has some special abilities. In the future, the 2099 Spider-Man uses Peter Parker's DNA to create a chronal link. I threw together a chronal link program using a sample of your DNA. It's allowing me to communicate with you at the point in time it was taken. And this allows the two of them to talk telepathically to each other through time, and seemingly over any distance. And in what can only be described as the best Spider-Man game ever made, at least until the sequels, Spider-Man does get several special abilities, depending on what suit he wears. Now, I'm not going to go over all of these here because, quite frankly, most of these spider powers come from technology. And in fact, they may all be tech-based. But to be fair, some of them do seem like powers, such as the suit that gives off a huge blast of negative energy. That could be because he has negative energy powers in this example, or it could just be the suit. Now, some people won't actually count these at all because it's not technically him having a powers, it's just a special move from a video game. But I did think it was worth mentioning because some people might argue that it counts. Now the Spider-Man powers I've done are mainly on the Peter Parker version, and I've done a few alternate ones here and there with some what-ifs, but I'm not going to go into the Spider-Verse because there are so many Spider-Men that I would literally be here for hours. But there is one that I'm going to mention quickly named Spider-Wolf, and I'm mentioning him because he's in the Ultimate Spider-Man TV show, and if I don't, people are going to complain about it, because this is an alternate version of Peter Parker who is evil, and not only does he have spider powers, including some extra organic spider legs that come out of his back, but he also uses the Siege Perilous to absorb life forces of all the different Spider-Men across the Spider-Verse, and makes himself even stronger. And he also has laser webbing that allows him to absorb others' life force, and is able to turn invisible. And that's every time that Spider-Man has gained superpowers. Now I do have to say that Spider-Man has been in literally thousands of comics since he was created in the 60s, and he's also been in a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows, so it's possible that one or two powers have been missed. I have of course tried to get them all, but if there are any other times that you know of that you think should have been mentioned, then please let us all know in the comments. Along with which one of these times was your favourite, and if there are any other superpowers that you want Spider-Man to get in the future. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.